In today's lesson, we are starting off with trig equations and we are starting with the general solution. To solve any equation means to calculate the value of the variable or the unknown to ensure that the left hand side will have the same value as the right hand side. So if we have a look at our trig equation that we got, this means we'll have to go and calculate the value for theta, that is the size of the angle that will give a sin ratio of a half. So if we go and have a look at our sketch, we want an opposite over hypotenuse ratio of a half, and that will happen if we have an angle of 30 degrees. We know this because it's one of our special triangles, but later on we'll also have a look at how to calculate this angle with your calculator. In previous grade 11 trigonometry, we also learned that we can work in all four quadrants with trigonometry, and therefore we can draw a triangle in the second quadrant that also makes an angle of 30 degrees with the x-axis and has a 1 to 2 ratio. We then know that using reduction formulas, the angle measured anticlockwise will be 150 degrees. So the 150 degrees also comes from that original 30 degrees. So sin of 150 will also give a ratio of a half. We can then also go and draw triangles that form a 30 degree angle with the x-axis in the third and fourth quadrants, but here the ratio that will be formed is minus 1 to 2, and therefore we will not use these triangles. And then we can of course go and add 360 degrees to these possible answers and get another answer that will also give us a ratio of a half. So we can add 360 to the 30 degree answer and get 390 as another option. And we can continue adding and adding 360 degrees as many times as we like. And therefore there's an infinite number of possible answers for this equation. Let's go and have a look at how we're going to write this down systematically. In our example, we immediately said that the first option for the angle theta is 30 degrees, and we knew that because it was a special triangle. We can, however, also go and calculate this with our calculator. To calculate this angle using your calculator, you should always first ensure that the trig function and angle is alone on one side of the equation. In our example, this is already true. When you use your calculator to calculate this angle, the calculator will automatically always give you the angle in the first quadrant, the acute angle, and this we call the reference angle. This is because with this angle, all the angles in the other quadrants can be calculated. When calculating this angle with your calculator, you start by pressing shift, and then the trig function, in our case sin, on your calculator. Sin to the power of negative 1 will then appear on your calculator screen, and then you enter the half, the ratio that was given. Your calculator will then give you the reference angle as 30 degrees. This was our second step to calculate the reference angle. When calculating this reference angle, you will always use a positive ratio, because we want the value in the first quadrant, the reference angle or acute angle, and that will always be positive. So to calculate the reference angle, we ignore the sign of the ratio. That positive ratio did, however, indicate that we will only work in our first and second quadrant, where sin is positive. So our next step is always to determine in which quadrants to work, and that we do by using the sign of the ratio. And here we are therefore going to work in the first and in the second quadrant, because that is where sin is positive. And now that we are working in our quadrants, we need to add the correct reduction formula for each quadrant. When calculating the angle in the first quadrant, it will simply be the reference angle, because there is no reduction formula necessary. And in our second quadrant, to calculate theta, we are going to use our reduction formula of 180 degrees minus, and in this case, we will subtract our reference angle of 30 degrees. Then we also saw that we can get more possible answers by adding a full 360 degrees as many times as we would like. So we need to indicate here that we can add any number of 360 degrees to both of these quadrants to get another possible answer. So that k value can be substituted with any integer because we have to add a full 360 degrees 
to get another possible answer. So here we need to mention that k should be an integer. And all that's left to do is then to simplify our second quadrant to say that theta can then be 150 degrees and add to that any number of 360 degrees. And here we now have two abstract answers and we call this the general solution of the equation. Example 2. Determine the general solution for theta if 2 cos theta is equal to negative 1. So here we're going to have to start off with the first step that I mentioned. We need to make sure that the trig function cos and the angle theta is alone on one side of the equation and therefore will divide negative 1 by 2. And then we can use our calculator to calculate our reference angle, which is 60 degrees. Reminder that you are simply going to press shift, cos, and a half, ignoring the minus when you calculate the reference angle. That minus, however, tells us that we will be working in the quadrants where cos is negative, and that is our next step, determining the quadrants. So the quadrants where cos is negative is the second and third quadrant. In our second quadrant, when we want to add the reduction formula, we're going to use 180 minus and going to our third quadrant, we are going to use 180 degrees plus. And the acute angle that we'll be adding and subtracting is 60 degrees, our reference angle. And then we're going to add any number of 360s to both of these equations. And also mention that k has to be an integer. And then our last step is simply to simplify. So in second quadrant, theta will be 120 degrees plus any number of 360s. And in our third quadrant, theta is 240 degrees plus any number of 360s. Example 3. Once again, determine the general solution for theta. And in this example, our trig function and angle is already alone. So step 1 is done. So we can immediately go to step 2 calculating our reference angle. When you now use your calculator and press shift tan of 2, you will see an angle of 63,43 degrees. Now we can move on to the third step, and that is to calculate the correct quadrants to use. And in this case, we are working with a tan ratio that is positive, and that means we'll work in the quadrants where tan is positive, the first and third quadrants. Step four is then to add the correct reduction formulas. So to calculate my angle, which in this case is 2 theta minus 10 degrees, in my first quadrant I'm not using any reduction formulas, so it's simply the reference angle. And in my third quadrant to calculate our angle of 2 theta minus 10, I'm going to add the reduction formula of 180 degrees plus my reference angle of 63,43. Once again, we need to mention that we can add any number of 360 degrees. Step 5 is then to simplify. So I'm going to start off in my first quadrant by adding 10 on the right-hand side. And I'm adding only at the constant term. And then I also add 10 on the right in my third quadrant. And lastly, we need to still divide by 2. And when I divide by 2, I need to divide every single term by 2. And therefore, in my first quadrant, I will have 36,72 degrees plus k times 180. And in my third quadrant, theta will be equal to 126,72 degrees plus k times 180.